Welcome, optimizing your brain health during menopause. That's what we're going to look at today. So welcome, my name is Tracy Montgomery and I talk about all things menopause, midlife and all the that goes with it. So menopause is something that all of us women are going to go through at some point in our lives. We can't avoid it. It's a natural process for the majority of us. It will inevitably happen. Some of us may have it induced due to surgical reasons. Some of us may have it because of medical conditions, but it is something that all of us are going to go through. And there are different stages of menopause. So I don't know what my hair do. There are different stages of menopause as well. So we've got the premenopause. So that's basically everything after puberty. Well, yeah, leading up to perimenopause. Now, this is the bit or the stage that we often consider as being menopause and the bit that we talk about because it's the bit when the hormones are doing one, basically, packing up their little suitcases and they're off, they're out of here. And on their way out, they cause this roller coaster of events, this hormonal shit show that we have to try and make sense of and have to try and deal with. So this is when we get the main symptoms. Now, the big problem is we don't know when menopause is going to start. We've got, you know, the average is 52, but it can happen at any point really once you've gone through puberty you can go on and there are women that have had early menopause it can happen a little bit later so after I mean the average age that they give is 52 so it can happen later my symptoms started at 55 so we don't know the next thing that we're not sure about is how long how long's a piece of string we don't know. We don't know how long those symptoms are going to last. And your cocktail of symptoms and your strength of symptoms, so what the symptoms are going to do, what they're going to cause you to do, is also an unknown. This is why menopause, the men menopausal transition, can be really confusing. Now, what does happen post-menopause, so post-menopause is considered once you haven't had a menstrual bleed for a year you're then in postmenopause and you're in postmenopause until you shuffle off and there are still symptoms that can occur during that phase so that's where we get a little bit confused because we have this point you will have spoken to women and you will have said maybe that's the other thing we don't talk about it too much but if you mention the menopause word You'll have, oh, didn't affect me. Oh, well, I'm out the other side. Well, you're in it. You're still in it. It still continues. Now, the thing is, it affects all of us in different ways. It affects how we think in different ways. And it can have differing consequences on us, depending on our circumstance and what's going on within our life. I'm just having a twiddle here. I'm not quite in the centre. I think it's my hair's putting me off today. I don't know what's going on now. It was all right earlier on. <laughs> anyway, oh, the joys of menopause. So we know that as we age, certain things are going to start to change. So the loss, the decrease in female hormones have a huge effect on our brain our brain's capabilities and our brain and body's abilities to cope to deal with life with what life throws at us be that physically be that psychologically so how can we make things a little bit easier for us we're often told that there are certain things that we need to do as we age to help look after ourselves, to help maintain our health and to help us with 
how we survive, what we can do. So in this little talk today, we're going to talk about what happens to the brain. And I'm going to give you some ideas of what you need to look for. So what I'm going to do, I am going to, no, I wouldn't do this the other day. And I don't know why. I don't know what happened. Hold on. Let me do that. I want to find my screen share. Here we go. Let me just see if I've got the correct bit open and ready to go. So we have, and we should have, right, this might go across the whole of my screen. So maybe I don't want to press that just yet because it'll get a bit carried away. So let me press screen share. Let me press this one. Let me press present. No, we are, we're good to go, I think. Okay, so we're going to look at one of the things that concern us as we get older. We worry a lot about our brain health and quite rightly, because our brain controls everything else that is happening to us. And we worry about other conditions because some of the symptoms of menopause, the menopause transition might get us thinking that there are other more sinister things going on. So how can we start looking at what is happening to us? So what are we going to be talking about? We're going to talk about, or we have talked about a little bit, what's going on in the brain. We're going to look at some tips on what you can do on the daily. And we're going to talk about the importance of sleep. Something that we all miss. So what is it that's happening to the brain? We've got, since puberty, hormones being released and female hormones, progesterone, estrogen, mainly, they're released at certain times during our cycle. And our brain knows how to respond to them. It's learned how to respond to them. But what starts happening as, let's just go back a little bit whilst we talk about that. What's not happening during the menopausal brain transition is the brain is looking for these signals, these hormonal signals, and they're not as they were. So the brain doesn't know how to respond. So there's a tapering off of our estrogen. There's a tapering off our, of our progesterone. Now, those hormones were our nurture hormones. Those hormones look after our body. They're there to keep us safe and they're there to get us ready for producing more offspring. Now, the problem is that when they start to wane, the actual functions within the brain start to alter and start to change and the brain can't find these signals. So the brain does not know what to do. So this is why we can have these symptoms. You know, the hot flashes, the um, insomnia, the fatigue, the brain fog. They're caused because the brain hasn't got the same signals as it used to. So we are aware of this. We know this is going to happen as we transition through menopause. So that is the first part of our armory, actually realizing what is happening or what could be happening with our brain. So what can we do to start protecting ourselves, our brain? So with everything, with any stage of life, we're always told the big three, exercise, diet, sleep, not necessarily in that order, but they are of equal importance. We were not designed to be sedentary creatures. However, as modern life has moved forward, we have, I'm not sure if we want to say lazy, but... The type of jobs that we do, the type of work that we do, 
has made our lives more sedentary. We have downtime. And a lot of that downtime might be watching Netflix. That's not good for our bodies. We, we, humans, are not designed for that. We're designed to go out scavenging, looking across the countryside for our nuts and our berries. We're not designed to sit in front of Netflix. However, modern life does that. The way that we work, sat at a computer desk, sat on a conveyor belt, sat driving, a lot of the necessities of modern day life are sedentary. We're not moving around so much. That in itself can bring along a lot of exercise exercises, a lot of consequences. Add into that the fact that we are a little bit more fatigued as we go through perimenopause and that we creak and ache a little bit more. We do have the reduction in our elasticity of our tendons, of our skin, of the whole of our body. It feels like sometimes we creak and groan, don't we? And that is because of the change in our hormonal profile. Profile. So we do need to be aware of this and we do need to try and move. We also need to be aware that if we are not exercising as much, that we will be putting on weight. And that added weight then can have a strain on our musculoskeletal system, that's your skeleton and your muscles. So we can have joint issues from that, knees and hips primarily, because we're walking around. Circulatory system, because the heart's got to pump more to get things around because there's more of us. So therefore, we can have metabolic compromise. So that means that the systems and our transactions within the body don't work as well. We, as women, can also become more prone to cancers once we've gone through, once we've gone into perimenopause. Type 2 diabetes, I know quite a lot about type 1 diabetic because my daughter is one. Type 2 diabetes is prevalent when we get older, when we don't move around so much, when we don't eat so well, when we don't exercise so much. And on top of that, we know that there is a correlation between exercise and mental health. Now, the exercise itself doesn't need to be strenuous, strenuous, strenuous exercise. We don't need to be doing a hit 30 or whatever they're called. Is there a new one? I keep thinking skit, but skit was something that I'm a teacher, that teachers qualified us to do, but I might be wrong. But there's definitely the hit ones, high intensity, high impact exercises. We don't need to be doing that. We can go for a walk. A little stroll can increase the heart rate, gets you moving, and that can have benefits on the body quite quickly as well. Also gets you outside in that wonderful fresh air that we seem to avoid an awful lot as we move on and especially during the winter. So diet and nutrition, this is also something that has changed as modern day has moved forward. Our lifestyles, our types of food have changed. We eat a lot of ultra processed or highly processed foods. They are nutrient deficient, we should say nutrient nothing. <laughs> the more processed the food is, the less nutrient benefit it's going to have for you. So we need to be careful about what we're eating. We're designed to eat harder foods to digest, foods that are leafy, foods that are lower in fats, higher proteins. So as we go through perimenopause, the recommendation is to aim towards a more Mediterranean style 
carb diet with lots of leafy greens, lots of salads, lots of whole grains. The whole grains are harder to digest and they help with the gastrointestinal tract. Our gut biome needs to have lots of variety for it to stay healthy. So if we eat a lot of beige foods all the time, uh, um, things like our um, deep fried fishes, our chips, those sort of things, the faster foods, a lot of those are beige foods, the gut biome decreases. Decrease in the gut biome has consequences on your overall health. And we will dip into these areas in more detail in later presentations as well. These are just things that you need to be aware of. Just changing the type of rice or the type of pasta you do have to whole meal can have a huge benefit on your overall health. So they're simple changes that you can make. Cutting down on the ultra processed foods and the refined sugars. Oh, that's repeated itself. How has that repeated itself? We seem to be repeating. Why are they repeating? Sleep. Sleep is something that we often neglect because we are rushing everywhere. We don't think about how important sleep is to us. Now, before we had electrical implements that could wake us up at any time in the day, in the night, we as humans allowed the rising and falling of the sun to coincide with our sleep patterns. So when it got dark, we went to sleep. When it got light, we wake up. So we could replenish our bodies and we need to sleep. Our bodies need downtime. That allows for repair. It allows, if you like, for a brain cleanse, if you like, a brain dumping, a natural brain dumping, because it closes the mind down and allows you to be ready for the next day with enough energy, with enough calmness, de-stresses you. If your brain has managed to close down and dump all the stress, maybe all the majority of the stress, you're going to be in a better mood the next day. So sleep often neglected. So we need to do things like routines, your morning routine to get yourself ready, you know, your day routine and your night routine for when you're going. And it's talked about an awful lot, having a healthy night routine to get yourself in readiness for a good night's sleep because it is so, so important especially as we go through perimenopause, because we can have the night sweats that are going to wake us up, the insomnia that's going to wake us up. So if we can have a regular night pattern, nighttime routine, and we can get as much sleep as possible, we're going to feel better about ourselves and we are going to be better the next day. So all of this can have consequences. So in this part of our circle callings, we talk about future casting. Now, your circumstance may have changed. And we are seeing an awful change, awful lot of change, not an awful change, awful lot of change in the dynamics of how people live their lives. So traditionally, people got married, stayed together, and then one partner or the other would die. Well, now we don't have that so much, do we? People change their relationships quite quickly. And we're finding, we're seeing statistical evidence is showing that an awful lot more women in their late 40s and 50s are finding themselves on their own. So that means there's a huge change in their family dynamics 
and also in their financial dynamics. So this is what we're going to look at in future casting. Now, I am not a financial advisor, but what I will talk about in this section is ideas and options that you can take on board if your future casts, your future proof finances are not going to be as you expected. And I'm not talking about working longer, not talking about getting a different job. I'm talking about options that our age group quite possibly doesn't mention all the time. And quite possibly we've got a little bit of reticence about looking at. And this would be through an educational format. OK, so. For us to be able to future cast. We need to know where we are now. Because if we've had a huge change in our financial circumstance, that can have an impact on how we feel about ourselves, our self-esteem, our confidence, and the fact that our future finances might be slightly different to what we expected, that can increase our stress levels. And therefore that obviously affects our brain health. So having an unstable future can affect how we work on the daily anyway, how we perceive others around us, we can have because we see others that have been in our friendship groups that have got a lot more security than we have. And we can have negative effect effects on our cognitive function. So it can have negative mental effects on how we behave and how we project ourselves. So what I would like to challenge you to do, well, it's not really a challenge, is to look at your current financial situation and look to see if it is something that you'd be happy with, as it is, in which case that's fine. Or if there are other elements there that you're concerned about that may be worrying you that you might want to do something about. Now, I am not a financial advisor. I am not going to be trying to sell you some life insurance. That's not what we're talking about. I'm not selling you a pension package. That's not what this is about. This is about educating you on being able to have some money coming in that is not another job, but it is something that can be done easily, either around what you're doing as is. So maybe your job is getting too much for you. The getting up every morning for work is too much for you. You can't face it or you've got care responsibilities for family around you and you're finding working and everything else too much so I can offer you education in different ways to earn and some of them are going to be ones that you're going to give me a bit of pushback on I know that already but they're exciting they can be done around and with conjunction of everything else. And they can be done fairly risk free, can reduce the risk so that it's not something that you would be concerned about. And it can be done so that that risk starts off teeny. And then when you're ready, you can do. However, so as I say, I am not a financial advisor. I am just here to offer opportunities that can help improve your future finances, to help future proof your retirement and the rest of your life so that you can live in the manner that you deserve, not the manner you expected, the manner that you deserve. So QR code on the screen. Book yourself a call and we can talk in more depth about that. So this is how these will run. We will have information about menopause to start off with, how it affects you, what you can do about it, different topics we can talk about, and then how I can support you and make sure that your future is 
financially a lot better off than you our current situation is actually going to be so as i say my name is tracy montgomery i talk about all things menopause midlife and everything that goes with it i will be here at this time on the regular unless people tell me it's not a good time and they want me to move to another time and maybe i'll put on an extra one or we'll just move all i don't know at the moment same time same place look out for the event that will come up in the group and i will talk to you soon bye for now